This is five on your side at four, focused on you. We begin with some breaking news at four. Right now, I-270 is shut down in North St. Louis County. You're taking a live look at the highway near Riverview. The westbound lanes are closed, and that's due to a semi-truck that is on its side. No word on how long the highway will be shut down or if anyone was hurt. Look for updates on air on KSDK.com and on the Five on Your Side app. An excessive heat warning is in effect right now in the bi-state. We are in a weather alert as temperatures approach the triple digit mark. Good afternoon. I'm Brent Solomon. K Quinn is off this week. This afternoon, St. Louis tying the fourth highest heat index on record at 117. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is tracking this heat wave for us. He joins us now with your weather first forecast. Yeah, we were there on Saturday or Sunday, I should say. Sunday afternoon was our first 117 for heat index, and that's the fourth highest on record in St. Louis. And it's not just this heat that we're dealing with right now. It's the humidity and that combination pushing even though most of us aren't hitting 100 degrees, we're pushing the heat index values to 110, 115, close to 120. You can see looking out at Zumbel and 70, traffic's on the roll, but it's a hot, hot day. There's Lambert, and at Lambert, we know we've hit 99. We don't know if we've hit 100 yet, but we were at 99 for a bit. You notice out in Kansas and Nebraska, temperatures are in the triple digits there, but all of us pretty much feel like we're in the triple digits. Our current heat index in St. Louis, 111 degrees. The excessive heat warning is extended into Friday evening. This dangerous heat's going to continue into Friday evening. The peak heat index the next couple of afternoons, 110 to 120. It'll probably start to ease a little bit Thursday and into Friday, but the big break is coming this weekend. And remember, cooldownstlouis.org, an easy place where you can go to get information if you're a qualified senior, person with disability, or low-income folks, or you can also make an easy online donation at cooldownstlouis.org. All right, Scott, thank you. Well, during this excessive heat warning, St. Louis County leaders are reminding you that there is help available. The county is partnering with the Salvation Army to open a cooling shelter on Page Avenue. It can hold up to 30 people at a time. There will be hot meals there, laundry, and case management services. Just call United Way at 211 for access to that shelter. Well, if you need a place to go to get cool, we have a list of places and other information. Text the word HEAT to 314-425-5355. New developments now in that hostage situation inside of the City Justice Center early this morning. It left a correctional officer hurt. Within the last couple of hours, St. Louis Police giving us an update on that officer's condition. Following your side, Travis Cummings is live outside of the Justice Center on South Turker Forest. Fill us in, Travis. Well, Brent, I got to tell you, the day started with this area swarming with police and SWAT team members. Now, just a while ago, we got an update from officials here at the Justice Center who say that the injured correctional officer is doing better after being attacked by several inmates inside this building here. In fact, it happened on the fourth floor solely. This started just after six this morning as the facility prepared to serve breakfast. Officials say two inmates attacked the corrections officer and held him against his will. A source tells Five on Your Side the inmates held him hostage while demanding, quote, hot food. Now, the SWAT team and other agencies were called in to help. Nearly two hours later, the 73-year-old corrections officer was released and brought outside on a stretcher and loaded into an ambulance. Our cameras did capture that. We talked to a member of the detention facility oversight board about today's incident. What you saw today, we're not surprised of. We made it very clear uh, in the almost 18 months that we've existed uh, that there are problems in the, in the Justice Center, there are condi conditions in the Justice Center uh, that have not uh, been addressed since the task force was created. Yeah, we're going to hear more from that group later today at 6. Now, we did hear from police that the two detainees had a long history of disciplinary issues that they had to address at some point. Uh, the police department is looking to bring charges against them for this incident. We're live downtown. Travis Cummings, five on your side. All right, Travis, thank you. Today, St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones sounding off on gun violence in the city, a problem she says hits close to home. The mayor says Darnell Macon, that's the seven-year-old who accidentally shot himself earlier this month in Berkeley, was her cousin. 
and now my family is dealing with a dual crisis, the pain of burying our baby and the overwhelming despair of his grandfather. Now she spoke out at a roundtable addressing gun violence in the city. Five on Your Side's Diamond Palmer will have more on that tonight on Five on Your Side at 5 and 6. Right now, a Bridgeton police officer is in the hospital with serious injuries after a woman driving an SUV hit him overnight. It happened on I-70 in Earth City. The highway patrol says the driver went off of the road, hit the back of a police car that was parked on the side of the highway. Well, the impact caused it to hit another police car, which then hit the officer. Both the officer and the SUV driver were taken to the hospital. The city of Chesterfield has advanced a $2 billion redevelopment project for the Chesterfield Mall. According to our partners at the St. Louis Business Journal, the council gave first round approval of the downtown Chesterfield project last night. Plans include demolishing the mall, replacing it with housing, commercial and office space, as well as a park and other amenities. Well, a potential makeover for the Clark Bridge in Alton. Today, the Great Rivers and Routes Tourism Bureau announced a proposal to add LED lighting to the bridge there. The agency says the $1 million project will enhance not only the Alton skyline, but will increase safety and lower energy costs. The proposal will be presented to City Council tomorrow. Right now, eight Republican presidential candidates honing their messages ahead of tomorrow night's GOP debate. The frontrunner, former President Trump, won't be on stage. He's preparing to surrender to Georgia authorities where he's accused of trying to overturn that state's presidential results back in 2020. NBC's Drew Petromo reports. As some presidential candidates get ready for their first debate in Milwaukee, co-defendants in the case accusing former President Trump and allies of trying to steal the 2020 election in Georgia, turning themselves into authorities in Atlanta. That includes John Eastman, the Trump election attorney and alleged architect of the alternative elector scheme, who's charged with nine counts in the case. Did they do a mugshot and everything inside? No comment. Trump confirming in a Truth Social post he will surrender at the courthouse in Atlanta on Thursday. Court documents show his lawyers already negotiated a $200,000 bond. The Republican National Committee announcing eight candidates qualified to be on the debate stage Wednesday night. They include fierce Trump critics. Nominating someone who's out on bail in four jurisdictions is not a winning formula. And defenders. Wherever possible, I would pardon him because I want to move this nation forward. Trump is skipping the debate, claiming his lead in the primary is so large and his policies so well known, there's no need to participate. I think he owes it to people. We shouldn't be displaying a sense of entitlement. For counter-programming, the former president recording an interview with former Fox News host Tucker Carlson. How and when people will see it is unclear. Carlson has been releasing interviews on X, formerly known as Twitter, since getting fired by Fox News earlier this year. A new poll from NBC News and the Des Moines Register of Iowa voters shows Trump with a sizable lead. But there could be a glimmer of hope for the challengers. That same poll shows a majority of Iowa Republicans are open to a new candidate, making the Wednesday debate a prime opportunity for Trump's rivals to steal the spotlight. Drew Petromo, NBC News, Washington.